Hi guys, Tammy Treyer, Mountain Women Journals at TreyerWilderness.com. I just did a huckleberry pie um, video uh, being baked in the sun oven, and I, when that is done, I am going to dehydrate um, celery. Um, quick, easy to do, and I just thought I'd show you the process. It couldn't be simpler, and uh, it's a great way to put celery in a jar for your winter months. Um, what I'm going to do is just um, slice this up into small pieces and place it on this dehydrator rack. Now this can be used several different ways, but I'm using it like this so that I don't, the parchment paper sometimes decides to fight with you. I lined it with parchment paper. I'm going to put my celery on top of here, place it in the sun oven, and it's that simple. So you can do that with blueberries. You can do that with... Uh, anything. Um, anything you want to dehydrate. Um, we, we are going to do tomatoes and make a paste and we are going to then uh, dry that and I'm going to use a uh, Tupperware uh, tool that is a hand crank and um, just powder that up and put it in a jar and I will have tomato powder for the winter months to make pizza sauce, uh, add flavoring to our meats, uh, what have you. You can do the same thing with uh, beef and chicken broth. You cook it down till it gets uh, thicker and then you just smear it on your parchment paper and dehydrate it. And we are going to try doing that in the house this winter um, over the wood stove in a uh, piece of equipment that the mountain man is going to make. So there's many ways to dehydrate things but there's such a perk to doing it. I honestly have a problem with eating some of the dehydrated foods. Um, I don't know what they put in it and I will say this. Um, we didn't have problems like this until we started going on to a whole foods, everything from scratch diet. Now, when we have anything from the grocery store, whether it's packaged or whether it's dehydrated or what have you, if it has um, preservatives in it, we get sick. And if we have to eat out because we're traveling and we can't find a place that makes good wholesome food, you know, so we go to a fast food place of some sort, we can be sure we're going to be sick for three or four days. So there really is a huge difference in eating whole foods and making things from scratch. And you don't realize it until you go um, off of the normal diets that are out there. I mean, eating store-bought food, I mean, that is what's available to us, and we live in a quick and fast and ready world. But making your own foods is so much better for you, so much healthier for you. I can't tell you how good I feel eating the way we do. So... I like being able to do this and I like being able to preserve our own things. So because I have problems with some of the dehydrated foods that I purchase, um, just not settling and setting well with me, I've been dehydrating our own things and it's that simple. Um, to be able to put celery and, you know, dehydrated celery into your stews and soups and meats and whatever, um, it's, it's a great, great and very quick and very easy thing to do. Um, these are some of the various ways that we preserve our food. Uh, we do canning. We can our fruits, our vegetables, and our meat. Um, as some of you know, we did 113 quarts of venison last year. We had five deer that needed to be processed, and we didn't have any room left in the freezer. So that was our option, and it's so simple and easy as well. Um, you'll see a video coming, um, or should have seen a video that just was out on our canning the venison, um, canning carrots, canning pumpkin, um, whatever I can, I'm going to video so that you can understand and see how simple it is, and it's not as scary as people make it out to be. I know the equipment doesn't look, um, it does look scary, plain and simple. Some of it looks like something you'd find it at, you know, in outer space, but the pressure canner is not something you should fear. It should be your friend. I mean, I can't t tell you how ecstatic we were to have full canning shelves last year. There was no room for everything we canned, and, um, our guys eat a lot, so our cupboards are bare, our shelves are bare, and we are stocking up again for winter. So um, being able to utilize what comes out of your garden, you know, if, if you can't eat it all, preserve it. If you can't jar it, dehydrate it. If you can't dehydrate it, freeze it. There are many ways to preserve your food, and um, it's something that we want to continue to educate on because in the event that things do fall apart, you need to be able to keep 
processing your food and knowing how to process your food. So the importance of having heirloom seeds that you can continue to grow things, save the seeds, and continue every year to produce food for your family is extremely important. As you'll see in my canning videos, there are special seals that I recommend uh, by Tatler that are out of this world. Um, continuously can be reused, giving you the opportunity to continue to save your food. Um, there are many dehydrators. Um, for those of you that don't have funding to purchase expensive equipment, we are frugal people also. Use your car. Your car gets hot. It's a great way to dehydrate your food. You know, if you're do doing something that's going to be juicy, make sure that you put a blanket down on the seat and or plastic. But you can use your car to dehydrate things. You don't need a sun oven. We have a sun oven, and I'm very thankful for it. But if you don't have the funding, don't think you can't do these things. You can. And you just got to think out of the box. If you don't have a lot of space in your home and in your yard to grow things, utilize the space you have wisely. There are so many ways to be able to garden in small spaces. Many people doing it. Many people that are farming on less than an acre. I know many, and they are wonderful people, and they are educating just like we are. So, you know, search for them. And But use your produce. If you have uh, celery in your... Um, produce um, drawer in your refrigerator and it's starting to go bad. Pull off what is bad, give it to your animals, or put it in your compost pile, and then utilize what is still good. If you're not going to eat it, it's going to start to go bad. Don't waste it. Dehydrate it. There's so many there's so many things you can do. And I there's nothing else that rubs me the wrong way worse than having to throw things away. Um, you know, we tried to eliminate that as much as possible, but, you know, we're just like everybody else. We're busy and sometimes neglect that the, you know, seeing that there's something in the refrigerator that needed used. So utilize what you have. Utilize your resources. Utilize what you are able to do at the time and, and make do with what you have. Uh, think out of the box. Find creative ways to make something if you don't have the resources to purchase it. And that is something else you will see from us is a lot of do-it-yourself projects so that you can utilize what you have or utilize something you have to make something you need. So this is just dehydrating celery today, but I wanted to share that with you. There's so many things you can do. Um, another thing that you will see coming up from us is preserving your meat with salts, brines, and smoking your meats. That's another very important thing to know in order to... Uh, be able to feed your family in a situation where maybe there's no electric, no power, um, that you are unable to freeze things, you don't have any other means of, of preserving it, and certain things need to be smoked or, or um, salt preserved. So we're going to educate on that too so that you know how to do these things. These are skills that are important. Whether they are traditional or primitive, they are necessary in our modern world as far as knowledge to have in the event you need to use it. And without um, our uh, past generations being available to continue to teach us or the lack of our interest at times, you know, we need to learn these skills. And that is why we feel it's so important to share what we know and what we are learning. Um, we're constantly learning new things all the time. That's our desire and and that's how we choose to live. Um, we're we're not we're we're sponge, sponges for knowledge, and um, what we learn to do, we will share because everybody needs to know these things, and it wouldn't be um, good for us to keep them to ourselves. So stay tuned for so much more information, and thank you all for sharing with us what you're looking to learn. Uh, feel free to email us at any time at survive at treyerwilderness dot com. And uh, join us on Facebook or Google Plus or Twitter and, um, you know, let us know what your needs are, what you're looking to learn, because there's a good chance we are already doing it. And if we're not, we either know someone that is or we will be doing it ourselves. So please don't hesitate to ask. Share with us your, um, your uh, accomplishments, things you're learning, things you're doing. Um, we are a resource for not only knowledge but sharing. And um, we appreciate you all. Thank you for joining us. If you haven't ventured over to our website, please do it, treyerwilderness.com. And you can sign up for our weekly newsletter, which will keep you up to date on all the things we've got going on. And we really treasure you all. Thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, I will show you this um, after it's dried. I'm going to show you it prior to putting it in the sun oven. I'll show it to you when it comes out of the sun oven. And then um, finish the video then. So thank you again for joining me. Stay tuned, all right? Take care.
Okay guys, there you have it. That is the celery on the dehydrator rack on the parchment paper ready to go out into the sun oven. So as soon as our pie is done, I will switch it up and then show you how it looks when it's finished. Okay guys, the rooster took over. <laughs> um, the celery is in the sun oven and is going to dehydrate. So I will uh, bring you back on here and show you how it looks when it's finished. But uh, the sun oven is just amazing, um, really does the trick, really makes summer cooking easy, is great for, um, especially for us and others in um, our um, vicinity and struggle. Um, we've got a lot of forest fires going on every summer and due to the dryness, so this makes it uh, real efficient and safe to cook So uh, and eliminates the need for fire. So. Just another thought, but uh, stay tuned. I'll jump back on here and show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, we are back, and that's some funny-looking celery, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to be really transparent here. You know, we are not perfect, and, and we are guiding others through our knowledge and through lessons learned. So I'm going to show you. That's my celery. My celery burnt in the sun because I took my horse out for a ride. It was his first uh, ride with the saddle on. I've been riding in bareback and I was having such a nice time I didn't get back to, to uh, get these out of the sun. So the celery burnt. Um, probably not that it's too awful bad but it would put some um, unwanted flavor in our food. So that is no good but I utilized the time to do blueberries once I got back. So you can see that the uh, blueberries are nice and dehydrated. They are not burnt. Um, so we too also have, you know, oopses. And you need to understand that in homesteading and trying all these new things, that that is part of part of it. If you don't try, you won't even have the chance to make an oops. So, you know, don't worry about whether you're going to fail. Um, take the time and try it and learn from whatever mistakes you make and from whatever failures you have and move on and continue to progress with your homesteading and preparedness desires. Don't, don't let um, an oops cause you to turn back and, and not give things a second try. So, you know, try, try again. Um, don't give up. So, um, this is Tammy Treyer with Mountain Woman Journals at treyerwilderness.com. Thank you so much for joining us, and be sure to tell your friends. We are trying to reach as many people as we can with our knowledge and just our uh, uh, videos on what we do here on our homestead. So you guys take care. Till next video, God bless.